Hey, what's up guys? Danny White here, Ethan Windy, episode three of Pipe Dreams. As you can see, we have pretty much all of our parts made for the final assembly. There's a lot of buildup, as you can imagine, just kind of tweaking things and adjusting things and sort of seeing how things go together like I talked about in the last episode. And now it's kind of the fun part, if, if I were to say there was one. So right now we're working on the little Michelangelo popsicle, something that I think we all know and love from back in the day. I was a cul-de-sac kid growing up, so you know, the ice cream truck made its rounds for sure. A little bit of suburbia action in there. So I think we used to we used to mess around with the, the baseball gloves, the bubble plays, I think the, the Sonic the Hedgehog ice creams were another one. And But this was always the main one, especially for me and my, my brother. We both collected Ninja Turtles and watched Ninja Turtles and I guess in, in some nights were Ninja Turtles. So this is, you know, definitely a nostalgic take for me. I usually have more fun with things that are like that. Just making this little popsicle for this guy to hold. I can't help but make the, make the eyes on this particular piece even. <laughs> I think uh, like nine times out of 10, you open up a Michelangelo popsicle and the eyes are like pretty perpendicular. So um, it's just in my nature to try to make things like symmetrical and so, you know, if I could go back and do it again, I might switch the eyes up a little bit, but it still has the effect. At this point, I've um, decided to kind of go with the arms here, attaching the hands. I'm going by the drawing pretty much as far as like how the hands are positioned. A lot of the movement comes within the shoulders and, you know, obviously the elbow joints. I try to at least be as anatomically correct as I can. I'm, there's definitely people out there that are really, really good at gesture and movement and, you know, any position is fair game. And Since I base most of my things off of drawings and everything, most of my drawings are somewhat straight up, so I end up making my figures kind of straight up as well. I think this happens, you know, with the whole pipe making thing as well. Like, you want something to be able to be stable and I think when, when parts are a little closer together, they become less fragile. So I try to keep most of my figures relatively intact and, and close together. is uh, you know once you make the second one you end up going a little faster <laughs> putting a little slime on there hot summer day melting out some of that Michelangelo slime there's a really fun part This is something that was kind of new to me with, with the Boro is, as opposed to soft glass, is just when you make your attachments, you really, you know, as many of you may know, you really have to make sure it's completely on there. I sort of go with the mentality that convince the glass that it's that it's all one piece, like everything welded on there and you know, no no real jagged edges or anything, which is, you know, was originally kind of hard for me with with the transition just because I love details and I love somewhat aggressive moves as far as texture is concerned, but sort of had to forfeit that a little bit with, with the Boro, but I've found some compromises, you know, with just letting the shape have an essence as opposed to a completely defined out motion. So as you can see, we have the, the torso and the pants here together, at least the sections for them trying to decide where I'm going to set the shoulders because they need to have the arms attached to them and that's kind of where you decide how the movement of the piece is going to go. And it's not just in the arms, a lot of times it's in the shoulders too. My buddy Coil Condenser is probably the one of the best at, at making those kinds of moves. He maintains that before he attaches a piece he'll make the movement with his own body and kind of see where the attachment's going to go. I'm, I'm not there yet but but I can definitely, definitely see the effects. Just 
trying to get a little bit of a back back motion going so that it almost the piece has a little space in the back but you know when the feet are attached to the front it'll create sort of a three-point stance it's obviously ideal for for any sort of standing type situation I like to create little landing pads for the limbs, for the arms, and just so I know exactly where everything's gonna go. One of the things about making figures and making characters and all that is that, you know, we see we see people every day, we see figures every day, so you know it's really somewhat reckon or easily to recognize when something is wrong or off or asymmetrical, you know, shoulders, eyes, anything like that. So I try to measure twice, cut once, but sometimes more cuts are made. I've heard that I have somewhat of a soft glass style of working and you know obviously that I believe that. I just I'm not necessarily sure what that means. I just you know I just think of it as glass and sort of like how I want it to look, so to speak, and you know whether that that means just carving with back pressure or you know, letting a form drop out a little bit and letting gravity take hold. Like I, I, I just utilize all the things that I feel like Glass like sort of wants to do while I'm still making it do what I want it to do. Like the nature of manipulation, I suppose. I really have a good time sculpting out of the mass, out of a bubble. This particular section, just carving the pants out of one bubble. You, know, you can't, you know, blowing out a little bit, but most of the time you're just more, sort of in a relief sculpture type of way, just pushing things back and creating texture by making marks and sort of almost chiseling the shape out with, with the tool. Sometimes with this process, you know, it's a process of trust. So there's a, there's a long way or a long time in between start to finish where you sort of have to trust yourself a little bit. Where, you know, sometimes you have to fight for the shape or, you know, kind of go on a journey with it to the point where, you know, eventually you know that it's going to look the way you want to look and then eventually the shape shows itself. For those of you wondering, I have decided to put eyes into the piece. Because why the f not? So getting this head all ready to go, I mean it's Got a little collar on him now and be able to create a neck out of this and again, you know, utilize that extra limb right there to enable movement in the piece. You know, I don't usually like to have too big of necks off the off the pieces because none of my drawings really ever have them. But for Boro and, and you know, pipe making especially, like I think it definitely is is necessary to have a little bit of a separation there. A lot of times, you know, people ask, or you know, as glass blowers, we always have to ask ourselves, like, you know, how, at, at what point do we really feel in control over the situation? Like, at what point do we really, you know, we've all broken things in sometimes in inexplainable ways, and you know, you you, you wonder, like, do I have control? You know, and I, I think, I think it still is sort of a, you know, like I said before, like, sort of a courtship, you know, and like you. 
you have to let glass have like a little bit of it as well. You know, I can, I, I feel like I can sculpt just about anything if that, like if, that if I think about it long enough and you know, all, uh, all mistakes aside, I, I really feel like, like I have a good relationship with glass. So what, what control I'm willing to give up in order to, you know, make the piece happy. I think I've really, you know, after making so many mistakes and trying something new and borosilicate from, from my soft glass background, I just decided to go into it with, with really as, as little fear as I possibly could, like not, not cringing going into the flame, not, you know, wondering if I'm going to hear something or something's going to break or, you know, put something in the kiln and worry about it, making a noise later. So I just, I really just at this point, I just, I just try to go for it and, and don't really get too hung up about certain things that might hold me back in, in the experimental stages of my career. Again, always a student, always learning and so much more to learn and, you know, just about the material and essentially just how, you know, the lifestyle. Thanks, guys.